is the Inner the Buzz podcast, helping smart businesses be even more innovative. Hi, I'm Jurgen Strauss from InnovaBiz. Welcome to episode number 64 of the InnovaBuzz podcast, designed to help smart businesses with an interest in innovation become even more innovative. Now, this has been another really busy week at the InnovaBuzz Hive, which is great. We've had a lot of fun. We've taken a lot of massive action, and I'll speak to some of that in the podcast later on. Now, one of the things that um, is fascinating this week, we'll publish a podcast interview next week with a guest who I won't preempt right at this moment, but one of the things that she said to us was, Stop trying to be innovative. If you're forcing yourself to be innovative, it's not going to happen. It's going to be contrived. It's probably not going to be innovative. So just relax. Be yourself. If it feels right, do it. And I thought that was great advice. So I'm starting with that today. Some of our activity that we've been involved in this week is publishing a couple of fairly significant blog posts around content marketing and digital marketing. One of those is a guest blog on another website and one is on our own website, so you can find that. But we'll link to those in the show notes because they do relate to the topic that I want to talk about today. So today I want to talk about frameworks. That's the topic for this episode. Now, why do we need frameworks? What are the benefits of them? So first of all, frameworks help give a structure to whatever it is you happen to be doing. They help guide you through that so that effectively you have a process for whatever it is that you're doing. Now, when I was a kid, I love to do jigsaw puzzles. And uh, you know, some, some of the big jigsaw puzzles can be quite challenging. You know, if you've got 1,000 or 2,000 or 5,000 pieces, they can be quite challenging. And it's pretty daunting just to sort of upend the box and then see what you have in front of you and how to go about that. Now, my strategy was always to follow advice I was given, I think, by my dad, who probably passed this down through the generations or had it passed down through the generations and it was find the corners first and then once you have the four corner pieces then build the frame around the outside because you know that there is one side that is a straight edge for the pieces that go on the edge and once you have the frame around the edge then it becomes a lot easier to start to put together the rest of the jigsaw. And I found that once I mastered that framework, if you like, that things got a lot easier and I actually started to solve fairly significant jigsaw puzzles. Now, of course, a framework is just that. It's not a complete rule book. And Simon Sinek has a quote where he says, rule books tell people what to do. Frameworks guide people how to act. Rule books insist on discipline. They're fairly rigid, so that's my interpretation of his statement. Whereas frameworks allow for creativity. And I think that's a really great expression of how frameworks can act as a guide for you, but at the same time still allow flexibility and allow you to be creative. So, would you rather just upend the box and try your hand at the jigsaw puzzle like that? make it up as you go, or would you prefer to follow a framework that is guaranteed to make it a lot easier and get you to the end result a lot quicker? Which do you think would serve you better and allow you to produce better results? So what is a framework? A framework is defined as a supporting structure that's in a general sense. In The context of what we're talking about today, a framework is a basic structure underlying a system or process or a concept or a procedure. So frameworks, as I said, they work. They give you a guidance. They give you a structure to a process. And most importantly, they still allow 
the flexibility to be creative, just as Simon Sinek pointed out. So frameworks work. Let me give you a few examples of some frameworks. So the first one, and this is one that I love to use, use it all the time. It's the format framework for presentations. The format framework provides structure to your presentation. It makes it easy and quick to actually put together a significant presentation, assuming that you have the knowledge in your head. It provides a structure that enables you to talk to all listener styles. So the people that are more why focused, the people that are more how focused and so on. In the format structure, your content is set up under key headings and the key headings are why, what, how and what if. That's probably familiar to many of you in terms of the five questions type procedure but format is a little different in that you start off with the why. And again, I refer back to Simon Sinek because he's got this great book called Start With Why, and it's very consistent, his message, with the format structure. Now, of course, each section has subsections then. So, for example, the why is broken down into providing benefits. So why do we do something? It's because of all these benefits. It's then a story, then a quote, perhaps some statistics, then a contrast frame, and then a question. Now, you might recognize that structure because that's how I opened this podcast episode. And you might like to go back and just analyze how I actually did that. Then, of course, we have the what section where we go into a little bit more fact and definition, followed by the how, which is where we are right now in terms of this podcast episode where we go through step by step what needs to be done. So imagine if you use this framework and could construct a presentation or indeed a podcast or perhaps a blog post in just 10 minutes. Would that be useful? So what I've done there is just applied the what if frame. Another example of frameworks that we use all the time at Anovabiz is the three-step digital marketing framework. And this is one that we outlined in a large blog post that we did um, as a guest blog at Small Business Smart Business, and I'll link to that blog in the show notes. By following this framework, it's easy to build a highly effective digital marketing system that delivers exceptional results on a consistent and ongoing basis. Now, of course, in today's interconnected world where everyone is online and consumers are searching online all the time and they have information at their fingertips 24-7, it's vitally important for a business to have a highly effective digital marketing presence and to be consistently generating leads through their digital marketing efforts. Now, unfortunately, most businesses find this very hard to do, and that's because they don't have a framework or they don't use a framework. So the framework for the digital marketing strategy consists of three steps. The first step is to attract. In other words, find out who your target customers are, attract their interest, and begin to build a relationship with them. The second step is to nurture. So you focus there on educating your target customers who you've started building a relationship with, educating them about every aspect of your business, your product, your service, and how you will help them. That's the important thing. And your aim in this phase is to become the trusted authority for them in the particular information space you're working in. And the third and final step is to convert. So you're going to make an offer, converting your leads into paying customers ultimately and, and in doing so, delivering even more value than they're expecting so that they'll return later on for more products or services and become ongoing clients on a long-term basis. So as I say, I'll post a link to that blog post in the show notes where you can read more detail about the framework itself. So imagine, again, with this framework having 
structure where you can easily build your own highly effective digital marketing strategy and tactics that will deliver you exceptional results. And the third framework that I'll just outline here today as an example is our content marketing framework and that's uh, published on our own website in the blog post but we will link to that also in the show notes. This content marketing framework makes creating content such as blogs, podcasts, articles makes that much easier and also much more effective in generating leads and converting those leads to customers. Because content marketing is so important we need to make it easier, quicker and more effective. So the framework is three steps again. Actually, it's four steps. I kind of talked about three in the blog post, but I think it's probably four. So you're getting the scoop here. Begin with the end in mind. That's the first step. So what do I want for my audience and how will I help them achieve that is the first step. Second step is a call to action. So tell the audience what their next step is that they should take to move forward. That's really important because a lot of people don't make it clear to the audience what what is their next step how do they progress this to the next stage and the third step of the framework is the entry offer so that might be a product or a service or it might be a, a free download which is an easy entry for the audience to help build the relationship with you and establish your credibility and then the fourth step which i haven't kind of listed as a separate step in the blog post is really to educate with exceptionally valuable content. Now I haven't done that in the blog post because I think that the education really overarches the whole framework itself and even goes on into the um, time when those leads become customers. So I think it's all about education and providing exceptional value in terms of the content. Now there was my cuckoo in the background. He wasn't laughing at me. That's just the half hour. All right. So imagine using this framework and constructing an epic blog post in around 30 minutes with a clear structure that gets your audience engaged and taking action. Would that be useful? I bet it would. So frameworks are a great way to save time. They make things easier. They keep things consistent. They make sure you're always doing the same process and ticking all the boxes. Did I mention they make things easier and save time? We use frameworks all the time at an overbiz. So the marketing funnel framework that we use, I've shared in episode 62 of the blog post. So you can go back and check that one out and compare with what I've outlined here. Even this podcast runs on a framework. And frameworks assist in helping you build automated workflows from your frameworked systems. So I've spoken a lot in the podcast about automating your marketing, about automating your systems. And the first step in that really is have sound processes in place that are based on frameworks. So I hope that was useful to give you an overview of frameworks. And I'd be interested to hear back from my audience as to the frameworks that they operate with and how they implement those in their business and how they convert those into repeatable processes and perhaps even automate some of those. Moving on then, um, last week in the podcast episode with James Eder as my guest, we issued a challenge about new connections. So speak to one total stranger every day and see what happens. So I'd like to report back on what I've Um, achieved there under the hashtag new connections so the first one which was actually a significant achievement I struggle with my internet here um, in my office the um, speeds are marginal at best of times and at the worst of times and more often than not we do get worse times because the bandwidth demand is so high they're totally unacceptable for doing anything 
useful on the internet, such as listening to podcasts or even recording podcasts, let alone using video. So one of the new connections I made turns out he's an IT guru and he put me on to the way I could get a high-speed cable internet connection here in my office, which I have since initiated. So I'm really looking forward to within the next week or so having high-speed internet here. That will be totally awesome and it's a great result of my first week of speaking to strangers. So other things I found out, I learned about uh, knee and hip replacements from one chap. Um, didn't realise that there were different types. So you could have full knee and hip replacements that I was aware of, but apparently there's some new technology out there um, for sufferers of arthritis that uh, simply put ceramic caps on the existing joint. And the benefits of that are that it's uh, much less... Um, invasive technology, probably more uh, long-term sustainable, and I'm not sure about the cost. I didn't quiz him to that extent, but there we go. So I learned something new in a totally unrelated field. And in addition to that, half a dozen probably um, new business opportunities, still in the very early stages, still in discussion, may not eventuate as opportunities, but it's good to have initiated those discussions because they certainly would not have been opportunities had I not made an approach to a total stranger. So I really would be interested to hear back from my listeners as to how their hashtag new connections challenge is going. And don't forget, we're only in week one. I think uh, I'd said 21 days, so two more weeks to go. And hopefully by that stage, it'll actually be a habit and you'll be quite comfortable talking to strangers and making new connections. Okay, and finally, I just want to come back and remind everyone about the Thailand planning retreat that we have planned for May, um, something that I'm really excited about. So this is a magical goal setting and planning retreat that we've got in store for the people coming along on that to help business owners design an awesome year for their business. The events from May 26 to May 31, it will be in a wonderful tropical island paradise off Phuket in Thailand. And at that time of year for everybody in the Southern Hemisphere, at least in our part of the world, um, it'd be nice to get into a more tropical warm climate so there in just five days you'll build a plan that will turbocharge your business and enable you to confidently predict and then achieve your results for the next 12 months now we will be focused on results and we will be making goal setting and planning fun and how could it not be fun in such a fabulous location the event is called My Best Year Yet. It's a hands-on program developed and delivered and led by five masterful business owners who have the capability, the focus, the power and the drive to really succeed and to help you do the same. Now, hopefully I'll be able to post some photos of the resort fairly soon. We're just clarifying um, if we can use the photos there or not. But uh, stay tuned for that one. And to find out more about this Best Year Yet event, we'll soon be hosting a series of webinars in March. And I'll provide more details about those webinars soon. So you can get on those webinars. We'll actually be talking and providing a lot of information up front. So that it'll be worth coming to the webinars, even if you don't want to come to Thailand, just to learn about some of the topics we're speaking about that do include content marketing, for example. Um, but we will also describe the whole event in more detail and um, if people are interested they'll learn a lot more there and we'll be able to register. So as always I'm glad that you've joined me for this Innova Buzz podcast episode and I thank you for listening. Um, I'd love you to give us some feedback and if you like go over to iTunes or Stitcher or Pocket Cast where you can subscribe and also leave us a review if you um, feel so inclined. That would be awesome. Now 
The show notes for this episode will be at inovabiz.com.au forward slash 64. That is the number 64, inovabiz.com.au forward slash 64. So we'll have all of the links. We'll reference those blogs that I mentioned, as well as um, some of the other stuff that I talked about. So we've, we do have another awesome guest lined up for next week's episode, and um, hopefully you'll be able to join us again then. In the meantime, I'm Jürgen Strauss from Anovabiz. Remember, if you don't innovate, you stagnate. So think big, be adventurous, and keep innovating.